Alrighty guys, we're back for some Urabrask Red Deck wins, and this is a March of the Machine standard brew. We're going to go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to you. Also, we do got that Discord link down in the description if you're interested in joining that up. Okay, what do we got in the build Urabrask? This is a 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, first strike. Legendary creature, of course. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Urabrask deals one damage to target opponent, and then you add one red mana. And then for one red mana, you can exile Urabrask, return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control, activate only as a sorcery, and only if you cast three or more instant and or sorcery spells this turn, which in this particular deck, I don't think that's going to be hard to do at all. So it transforms into the great work. It's a saga. Chapter one deals three damage to target opponent and each creature they control. Chapter two, create three treasure tokens because why not? <laughs> Chapter three, until end of turn, you may cast instant and sorcery spells from any graveyard. If a spell cast this way it would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead, right? Exile the great work, then return it to the battlefield front face up. So you get the Urabrask back on the board, and then you get to cast instant and sorcery spells from the grave. Probably just wrapping up the game at that point, especially if you're burning down the opponent's face already, right? So what else do we got in here to work with Urabrask? Well, we have all four Ancestral Angers. Uh, this was actually a suggestion down in the comments to try out Ancestral Anger with Urabrask. So thank you for the suggestion. I do think it's going to be great in here. Um, you know, one mana sorcery. We don't get to see it too often. I better go over it real quick. Target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is one plus the number of cards named Ancestral Anger in your graveyard. And then you get to draw a card. And that's kind of like the, the best part about having this in here, right? You get to play it and then you get to draw. So you get to find another instant or sorcery to play. So you can get one step closer to flipping that Urabrask, right? So, okay. And the festivities. It's not a mechanized warfare brew, but and the festivities still hits a decent amount of cards overall, and it still hits the opponent's face too. It's gonna work well with one of our other cards in here as well. So we have four monastery swift spears because creatures are kind of sorta gonna be important in here. We have all four play with fires naturally. Okay, another new one. Four Blood Feather Phoenix. This is a two mana two two with flying. Blood Feather Phoenix can't block, unfortunately, but whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control deals damage to an opponent or battle, you may pay one red mana. If you do, return Blood Feather Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. Nice, not bad. Now, I guess overall, playing this out for two mana isn't the greatest thing, so it is nice to actually send this to the grave earlier and then eventually like hit your opponent's face with a play with fire and then spend one mana to have a nice hasty phoenix come back right so we do have all four thrill of possibilities in here which is just gonna you know obviously work wonders with the phoenix but it's gonna work wonders with that urabrask too because it is an instant so two mana instant as an additional cost to cast this spell you discard a card then draw two cards yeah i i think it's gonna be absolutely terrific in this particular deck so we'll see huh also have a single Ren's Resolve, which could also be uh, Reckless Impulse. They read the exact same, they just have different names, so I guess play one or the other. <laughs> Either way, right? Reckless Impulse technically rotates out later on this year, where Ren's Resolve does not, so that's important. So we're just playing with the new one, Ren's Resolve, right? Exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your turn, you may play those. Nice. Got a couple of Ral's reinforcements in here. When I was going over the different red decks uh, for the videos over the weekend, I had Ral's Reinforcement in like three of them, three out of the five or so. And it's it's such like a simple ability that we see often, but I feel like it, it works so well in so many different style of red decks right now. I, I really do. I considered actually having all four of them in here, but not this time around. It's actually very difficult to find room for them. Overall, I think it's going to be terrific though. Oh. Uh, two mana sorcery, <laughs> you create two one one blue and red elemental creature tokens. I'm sorry guys, I'm getting ahead of myself. I should probably read the cards once in a while. <laughs> we have 
four lightning strikes in here naturally. Here's another new one, and the here is Warcrafting. This is a three mana sorcery, deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Then you look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the excess damage dealt this way. You may exile one of those cards, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. That's actually pretty decent, guys. Even though we have no like battles to target in here, sometimes you just gotta do five damage to a creature. And that'll that'll do it, right? Sometimes you're gonna hit a creature that has three toughness, and so you're doing two excess and you get to uh check out the the top two cards, right? <laughs> and then you get to play one of them. I mean that honestly seems pretty decent it is sorcery speed so that holds it back a little bit but i do think it's just going to pair nicely in that urabrask style build got three stoke the flames should this be four i have no idea this is a four mana instant speed with convoke and when you convoke your creatures can help you cast this spell each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one mana or one mana of that creature's color so that's pretty cool, right? Stoke the Flames deals four damage to any target. That's huge, guys. There's probably gonna be lines of play in here where you have like the Rouse Reinforcement, which you could use those creatures right away to cast the Stoke of Flames, of course. And if you have that Urabrask out there, um, getting close to a free Stoke the Flames could be absolutely huge as you're adding those red sources from the Urabrask every time you play one of these instants and sorceries. So. I don't know, man. There's probably going to be insane lines of play, and the Convoke is going to come in handy often. The very top, Invoke Calamity. This is a 5-mana instant, and if you get to pull off a turn 4 Urabrask into a turn 5 Invoke Calamity, you're probably going to win the game right then and there, right? If you can pull it off. So, it's an instant speed. You may cast up to two instant and or sorcery spells with total mana value six or less from your graveyard and or hand without paying their mana costs. So it does say you may cast, right? So that's important. If those spells would be put into the graveyard, then exile them instead and then exile Invoke Calamity. Yeah, like I said, if you can pull off turn four Urabrask into turn four Invoke Calamity, <laughs> yeah, you're probably just winning on the spot, right? You could do something like the Rouse Reinforcement for the two mana and then the stoke the flames for the four mana since you cast the invoke calamity and you're casting the stoke the flames and the reinforcement you're getting three red sources off the urabrask that's already three instant and or sorcery so you can use one of those red sources to flip the urabrask or you know you have other stuff open too maybe you can lightning strike the opponent's face you're adding another red source so you still got two maybe another lightning strike why not right and then use that last red source to flip the urabrask and holy cow that sounds ridiculous doesn't it Okay, 23 total mana. Maybe it should be 24 because we do have relatively expensive, like you always want to see the fourth or the Urabrask. But since we're kind of filtering with the thrill of possibilities, I'm not too concerned. And, you know, we get to see more off the Ren's Resolve too. I think we'll get the fourth mana often. But yeah, maybe this should be 24 land. Of course, one of them is a Crucible of Defiance, which is going to be pretty solid in here as well because of the Convoke for Stoke the Flames. Honorable mentions, guys. I'm not going to lie. This one was pretty difficult to put together because I feel like there were so many different ways to put it together overall. So no Kamano in here feels super weird. But yeah, it doesn't like fit the whole instant and sorcery theme between the Phoenix and the Urabrask. So not this time around, but I mean, you got to consider it for sure. Vindictive Flame Stoker was one I considered a big time. Burning Sun's Fury. I'll probably try to include this in a different list, one that actually runs all four of the Rouse reinforcements as well. But like I said, with the Stoke the Flames, I think the Convoke is really going to come in handy with that Urabrask. So Mechanized Warfare, not this time round. Rebel Salvo, not this time round. Now, there's no um, equipments in here, but just five damage is pretty important. And then that permanent lose is indestructible. I think I actually put this in the honorable mentions to compare to the Nahiri's Warcrafting, but yeah, overall, I think Warcrafting is going to do a lot more in this particular build. No Squee this time around, but I think it would be decent in here, and no Mirex either. Um, I think that it's going to hold us back a little bit in the later game when we're going to want to play a lot of different red cards all on the same turn, so eh, something to consider, though, I suppose. <laughs> okay, guys, that's the list. It's a relatively simple one, but it took me a while to go over because we got so many new cards in here. 
Uh, I also don't think it's going to be a simple one to play by any means, uh, so I'm a little bit nervous. Either way, let's go ahead, take it into some ranked, and see how we do. All right, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. I'm honestly not sure, because obviously the game just updated. Okay, yeah, we're in. Let's go, guys. All right, no issues so far uh, for the first day of March of the Machine. Okay, yeah, I mean, we keep this. We can always send one of the lands to the Thrill of Possibility. We'll see, though. Probably going to be turn one, turn two, Swift Spear. And maybe at that point we'll have drawn like a play with fire or something. Maybe. Look, we go first too. Oh, what a great way to start out the evening. I really got to uh, start paying attention to who goes first and who goes second before anything else, right? Play with fire. Oh, opponent. It's not very nice, opponent. I guess with Spear over uh, holding Lightning Strike open, right? Just uh, get another creature onto this board state. Mono Red. What kind of monster plays Mono Red, guys? Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, well. I don't like the Thrill of Possibility play here because we have the fourth for the Urabrask already. So we're actually, I'm going to keep the Lightning Strike open for whatever they give a counter to off the Kamano. I think that'll be completely fine. Oh, uh, unless it gets around. Well, that's not good, guys. <laughs> that's not good. Um, We could Thrill of Possibility. We probably see a mana. But if we don't, then uh-oh, right? Oh, crap. Okay, we'll take the five. That's a tough decision, guys. I don't necessarily want to lightning strike the Phoenix check. We thrill of possibility and we don't see a mana. Maybe we'll see removal for the Storm Seeker, though. Because that's, that's hefty, man. Ancestral. Okay, we did end up seeing the fourth mana. The question is, will they have enough damage to take care of the Urabrask then. We, we, we better play it. We need the blocker. And if they have removal for it, it's it's fine. Like, we could have kept Swift Spear back as an emergency blocker, but if they remove the Urabrask, like, this is going to be heavily leaning towards the opponent regardless then, so might as well get the swing in while we can. Swinging in the air. It doesn't look like removal for Urabrask, which could be huge for us guys okay he switches to nighttime i don't mind seeing the mountain here by any means uh we're actually going to start with the ancestral anger though plug that onto urabrask and if we lightning strike slasher okay how do we want to do this because the plan is to flip The plan is to flip the Urabrask. So we do this. We're going to get another mana. Then we Lightning Strike the Storm Charged Slasher. Okay, good news, guys. They're not doubling down on Lightning Strikes on the Urabrask, which is uh, kind of huge for us. <laughs> so we do this. We get another mana. We flip the Urabrask, right? We don't swing in. Wait, do we swing first? It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We Maybe we would have swung first. No, no, no. No, we would have lost the red source, right? So we wanted to do it that way. Right? Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Sorry, guys. New cards, right? So, uh, I mean, you add the red source. If we would have went into combat, then... I mean, we would have... Ooh, play with fire, that's good. Oh, are we gonna die? Oh, we're gonna die! Oh no! 
All right, we got to keep play with fire as emergency removal. Um, the heck did the opponent do on their turn while I was reading? Just the bloodthirsty adversary. Whatever's left in their hand, guys, it could be a play with fire. It could be anything. End the festivities, right? Oh no, guys. Oh no. Are we gonna get there? <sighs> Alright, we should we should definitely scry. Dude. The great work getting us there, huh? <laughs> Let's go. Oh my goodness, that could have been anyone's game though. That was super sketchy. Holy cow, dude. Anyways, yeah, um, so maybe there was like a line of play where we swung with the Urabrask before playing all of our instants and sorceries, right? Because we don't have to tap the Urabrask for that bottom ability. It does have the first strike too, so like we had the first strike trample. It probably would have went through. Maybe we could have closed that up a little bit earlier. That's something to think about, guys. I mean, this that was my uh, first game playing with the Urabrask, so... <laughs> Uh, you know, learning process, I suppose. We'll learn it together, huh? That was scary, though. It's a good first game. It's a really good first one. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's see if we can get right into the second game as well. What do you guys think of the build so far? Um, popping off with Urabrask right away. It's like I said, I once you get Urabrask onto the board, I don't think it's going to be difficult in this deck in particular to, to flip it pretty much every time uh so we'll see right we'll see if we can keep up the pace here we have play with fire open probably just end up casting the blood feather phoenix honestly yeah i'll hit the opponent's face here this is probably just to consider and they don't want to spell pierce up play with fire stoke the flames um, kind of want to see more than that, right? I guess we send this. If this is just like your classic mono blue, I, I'm not sure. Okay, Stoke the Flames number two. I, I guess that's fine, right? Uh, yep, it's going to be a consider. So this might just be your classic mono blue, which this hand in particular doesn't feel well suited to take on mono blue, so we'll see, man. I mean, island number two needs to come down for sure. Okay. And then just keep open the counter spell. The, the classic plays, right? We'll see what they do to the Ren's Resolve before we uh, swing in or anything. You never know with mono blue, they can have uh, some fancy flash creatures and stuff, so. Okay, it's going to be a negate for that, huh? Okay, interesting. And we'll keep the play with fire open for their turn, even though they're going to be untapped, because it, it's a similar concept. We can get them to tap down. Oh, wow. Alright, well, I'm going to play with fire their face, and then we'll stoke the flames the hottie gin. Gets us a scry. Yep, get that mountain out of here. We definitely don't want to see that. <laughs> Ooh, invoke calamity's good. While they're tapped out, you take out that gin. You know what? I wonder if they just have two hottie gins and that's why they risked it here. I wonder. Maybe they just wanted to get gin down as soon as possible because of the Phoenix chick, though. Yeah, Phoenix chick. Listen to me, guys. This is the Blood Feather Phoenix. I'm going to do that so much, probably. Okay, Ancestral Anger. Impulse. Looking for the Fading Hope, probably, right? That would be particularly bad for us. At least we'd be able to play the Phoenix check again, but I really want this draw. Going for the Consider. Make Disappear. Nice. Okay, Thrill of Possibility. Man. Wow. Wow. I mean, we could search for more. Like, we could, Thrill of Possibility, find the Ancestral Anger, but I don't want to ditch the Calamity. I think the Calamity could be huge, especially recasting the Stoke the Flames. Ugh. Okay. 
Yeah, let's see what we end up drawing here. Oh, they still have a mana open too. Well, that could easily be a spell pierce. Easily. Do we risk it? It's going to be probably stoke the flames to the opponent's face and then Ren's resolve to try to see more. Because they're at 9, they're not at 8, so we can't wrap this up unless we had like a lightning strike in the grave. Let's start with the swing. Unless we go ancestral. No, this is fine. Start with the swing. We want to do the calamity on our turn. That way, if it's not a spell pierce, at least it lands. Uh, okay. So we have Stoke the Flames upon its face. Is it Ren's Resolve or Play with Fire? Just get them down as far as possible. We do get a Scry off of this too. And we have Thrill of Possibility. Okay, I, I, I talked myself into it. Just all the damage to the opponent's face. Okay, get that mountain out of here, dude. <laughs> you never know, man. They might not find the second Hottie Jin to block this Blood Feather Phoenix. 10 damage swinging in on the terrors. Three cards in hand. Ooh, Warcrafting. All right, we try the swing. It might be a fading hope here, unfortunately. Flow of knowledge. Oh, they probably find the fading hope though, right? I mean, they, something, something. I'd be shocked if they don't find something here, man. They have one island open. Fading hope. Okay. All right. So we can do this, guys. We could totally do this. Um. So Blood Feather Phoenix can't block. So it's actually going to be Thrill of Possibility ditch the Phoenix, right? And keep the Warcrafting. We can't use the Warcrafting, though, on the Terror because of the Ward 2. Oh, no. They're at 1. How are we going to get this through, guys? Urabrask. <laughs> we have a blocker, but they can just go ahead. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I don't know about this one, man. This this really could have gone either way, huh? It's probably going to be Fading Hope number two swing for ten, right? I can only imagine. Yeah, GG opponent. Oh, man. The ward two, once again, uh, being absolutely terrifying on the terror. We've seen that happen often. If it didn't have the ward too, then it would have been Warcrafting. We would have had that extra turn to find the burn. We had so much burn packed in here that there was probably a good possibility that on the Thrill of Possibilities, we saw it as well, right? Even like an End the Festivity would have ended it. Other than that, if I wouldn't have done the Play with Fire, maybe the Ren's Resolve would have helped us find it a little sooner. But I'm not convinced by that either. I, I think... Getting the opponent down to one, well, yeah, because there was a chance they didn't see a Fading Hope as well, so I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, Mono Blue always going to be a tough uphill battle regardless because you never know when they're going to have it and when they're not. Seems to be a fair bit of people playing right now, about five seconds to get into the games. It's pretty good. It's pretty solid. I mean, that's about as fast as you can ever hope for. We go first, relatively sketchy hand here. We got removal, right? But no creatures. Ah, eh, whatever. Let's try it. Let's keep it. Let's give it a shot. Like, worst comes to worst, we can always ancestral anger their creatures <laughs> just to get the draws off of it, right? Okay, nice. Get that swift spear out of here. Uh, going first against our fellow Mono Red is excellent. The biggest issue is the hand that we ended up keeping then. Problem here is they know we're keeping open Burn too, so do they just play around that? Maybe. I'm actually just going to keep it in hand as well. I think having it as removal is much more important. Sure, Blood Feather Phoenix, why not? We're going to save the Ancestral Angers because this could be pretty good. And if they burn the Phoenix, the Lightning Strike to the opponent's face, we get to bring it back nice hasty from the grave. 
They go for the lightning strike to the face. Okay. Reckless impulse. Nice. Commando. Urbrask. Let's go. <laughs> mirror match. Different cards, but mirror match. Okay. We'll start with Ancestral Anger. The reason we do that before the land is we might see our own version of Reckless Impulse, which might draw us into more land, too. Um, yeah, we're just going for it. We're going for the damage. The pawn is tapped out. They're not going to be burning this, so... We could keep the... Lightning Strike open for their turn. See, see if we can hit anything. I think the big thing, though, is just going to be hitting the opponent's face regardless, so... We'll see, man. Play Mountain, have a 5-5 five, five first strike. Oh, they didn't find the Mountain, though. Yeah, Swiss Spear is not the greatest thing to hit with the Lightning Strike. Um, Now it is. Now it's a good thing to hit with the Lightning Strike. <laughs> that definitely slows him down for another turn, so... Blood Feather Phoenix number two. Yeah, GG opponent. GG, I understand that concede for sure. Well, since we went first, we were like... Just a little bit of a step ahead. Just a little bit, though. I mean, and they missed another land drop on that last turn, right? So they didn't get to play their Urabrask. I think that's how that ended up working out, so... I don't know, man. Probably, once again, could have gone either way, because if they would have found that fourth mana for the Urabrask, and then it would have been a 5-5 first strike, that would have been very difficult to take care of, so... <laughs> so far, so good, man. I like how the deck is playing out, even when we kept that sketchy hand. Um, I think we'll be able to keep up pace. I do. Which, uh, generally speaking, when a new set releases, <laughs> it's kind of the opposite. <laughs> but yeah... Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, there's nothing to complain about here. We're going first again, too? Man. Just uh, play out the Blood Feather Phoenix is completely fine. I, I think the big keyword here is the flying, right? <laughs> I think that's the big keyword. Like, we have Thrill of Possibility, too. If we want to buff. Okay. We'll try that instead, actually. So we'll go Thrill of Possibility, ditch a Phoenix, buff the Swiss Spear, see what we see. Yeah, more mountains, that's terrific. Just like the extra draw. Man, we're seeing a lot of mono red right now, guys. We're just like seeing a lot of mirror matches right now. Play with fire, Swiss Spear is out of here. So Thrill of Possibility number two could help us find the burn to bring back the Phoenix from the grave, but Ah, uh, Thrill of Possibility number three. Eh. Yeah. Uh, how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. I think this time I'm just playing out the Blood Feather Phoenix, guys. Now, so it wasn't going to be a play with fire for the Phoenix, so they didn't have a second one. Like, we, I, I guess Thrill of Possibility could send the first Thrill? But we'd probably want to send a mountain at that point. Spell Spear, nice. Okay. We keep the mountain, right? Probably keeping this open so we can't hit it. So we should probably just hit face all around, right? See what's on top of the deck. Bring the Phoenix back. Ancestral Angry. I'm going to keep that, actually. Auto pay. We have we have the four for Stoke the Flames, technically, but we're just going to swing in the air. Down to 11. I guess it's going to be Thrill of Possibility. We'll draw an Ancestral Anger, and we'll ditch the other uh, possibility here, just for the sake of card draw, right? Yeah, Spell Spear looks good, and we maybe should have tried to hit it with the Play With Fire, but they did have the Open Mountain, and it might have been way too easy for them to evade the Play With Fire. Instead, we're just going damage in the air, which could be huge for us. And if they don't have the second Play With Fire to try to take out a Phoenix, then it's not looking, it's not looking bad. 
at all. Ancestral Anger, another mountain. Okay. Ancestral Anger, wow. <laughs> that is awesome, dude. Okay. We have eight. Let's see what we draw. And the festivities, wow. I mean, I, I guess we just... Wait. No, we don't have enough yet, yeah. I guess draw again, right? Lightning strike. Holy cow, dude. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right. Swing for seven. <laughs> and the festivities. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to have anything here. I mean, what would they have in red? Prevent that damage from going through? I mean... Dang, dude. Wow. All right. This deck can seriously plug damage through. I'd love to get the Urabran. I mean, I can't complain too much, though. In the first game, we pulled off flipping the Urabrask, so... I can't complain too much, but I would love to get one more game where the Urabrask uh, comes out and does a thing, so... Yeah, dude, so far so good. I mean, hopefully we can see something other than mono red though too right i'd like to actually test this against maybe some other meta decks what else would we be seeing right now i mean soldiers we haven't seen soldiers in a little while uh selesnia toxic we haven't really seen in a while this, this seems like a risky hand but rouse reinforcements on turn two isn't too bad no more mono red no what are you doing why opponents why <laughs> is it because like the new set released and everyone wants to go aggro maybe oh man well this is uh mono red's chance for revenge right because i i think we've or how don't i remember right now we we just played the games um I, I think we won against every mono red li list so far, right? I think so. So this is their chance for revenge. So we're gonna go uh, reinforcements here. Um, so if we see a third mana, okay. I'm thinking guys, I'm thinking. Ancestral Anger does give Trample too. Swiss Spear. Oh yeah, we're in trouble, guys. Oh yeah, oh my goodness. And the Festivity wipes those out. We're in some serious trouble, man. Uh, if we had those on the board still, then it might have been a little bit of a different game, but this is all very slow as well. Just outright play Phoenix. We keep the one open. It doesn't do too much with the uh, angers here. Phoenix can't block any of these either. Let's see what we see. We'll see what we see here. This is probably... Oh, they have the blood token open, but you never know. It could be a play with fire as well. Uh, we could draw just for the sake of drawing. I think I'm actually going to do that as well. Uh, just for the sake of drawing, guys, we're like, we need to see, yeah, I guess our fe and the festivities, but it doesn't take care of Swiss beer. Ancestral Anger number three. Oh, man. Even if we were able to keep those creatures on the board, I think this would have been an uphill battle for sure. With, with how we're drawing right now. Then again... I don't know, man. Ancestral Anger really knows how to pack the extra punch through the Blood Feather Phoenix on the board or something. Maybe it would have been possible. Maybe. So we can hit one of the Swift Spears. Bring Phoenix back. Phoenix can't block, so. Oh, Phoenix has to hit. Uh, it has to hit the face for the Phoenix. I apologize, guys. That's pretty funny, though. Well, then, either way, since it can't block, so if we would have hit their face. Paid the one and then the Ancestral Anger. Sure, it's a, a decent amount of damage, but overall, I don't know. I don't know about this one, guys. This, uh, it kind of looks like it's going to be the opponent's regardless. Oh, Solfim. Cool. Very cool. 
not going to play the Saltham. They, they must just have uh, cards in hand. Help them plug this extra damage through, right? Just Lightning Strike face and that's 7 damage total. Well, play with fire. 6 damage total. They need one more. One more. Maybe it's an end of festivities. Since they already played one, there's a good chance there's another one. Oh, second play with fire. Oh, no, there's the lightning strike. Ah, oh, they just went the uh, the long way around, huh? Well, let's see what we draw here. Urabras, play with fire. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> we didn't do any damage to them, guys. We could have done lightning strike to their face, get the uh, phoenix back from the grave, and then dropped the ancestral anger on it. That would have been a decent chunk of damage, but overall, we needed to somehow defend... Uh, in that last one, so. Alright guys, let's try to get one more game in, and let's just hope that we're not up against Mono Red, just for the sake of testing the deck, right? Like, we kind of want to see a variety. Come on, opponent, bring some variety to the table, buddy. I believe in you. Okay, but not like Orzov variety, that just sounds miserable. Give me some other variety. <laughs> okay, a decent hand for the last game for sure. For sure a decent hand. Um, we might try the Thrill of Possibility Ditch the Phoenix again. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, it's Grelf. Okay. This might be... This might still be a de different style, right? Grelf can't block. Yeah, Thrill of Possibility Ditch the Phoenix Chick. See what we see. Swing with the Swiss Spear. Ancestral Anger is pretty good. Okay, next turn, we can go play with Fire Their Face, bring back the Phoenix, the Blood Feather Phoenix. I wonder how many times today I called this the Phoenix Chick. Oh, that's a pain in the butt. That's a big old pain in the butt with the lifelink there. Try to take it out if they block the Swiss Spear. They don't know what's in hand. I think I'd rather actually play... The angers, though, too. Hit the opponent's face. I'm concerned about the lifelink, but we're just, we're trying to go fast. I'll keep the Urabrask. Uh, so much spot removal in Orzot. Let's keep the... No, opponent, come back! Come back, opponent! We finally see some variety and they concede! <laughs> no! All right, here's what was going to happen, guys. We're going to keep the Urabrask just for the sake of seeing Urabrask one more time today. Uh, we're going to pay one mountain, bring back Bloodfeather Phoenix, which gains the haste. Uh, we were going to play Ancestral Anger on the Swift Spear for the sake of Trample, right? Uh, right? Yeah, I think that's what... Well, if we put it on the Phoenix, it would have been three in the air regardless. No. Yeah, for the sake of Trample because of the prowess too, that's where we'd want to put it, because then if they block with the missionary, trample damage gets through, the lifelink uh, creature dies, and we're swinging in the air for the two as well. Depending on how much removal the opponents had in their hand, I, I'm kind of shocked by the early concede from the opponent. That kind of sort of sucks, but either way, almost 40 minutes into the video, guys, let's go ahead and go over the deck one more time. This was a fun one, guys. <laughs> I wish we would have seen a more variety from the opponents overall, but, you know, we proved that we can take on uh, current varieties of mono red, at least. So that's good news, right? I think Thrill of Possibility is going to be excellent overall. The biggest concern is just going to be counter spells. And so going up against like that mono blue list was a very concerning and you need like such a fast hand to take on mono blue overall. The good news is if they do play Jin and stuff, you know, Stoke the Flames does offer removal against the Jin, which is excellent news, right? The Warcrafting offers removal against the Terror, but at that point in the game, if they do have the Terrors, you're just trying to focus everything into the opponent's face regardless and uh, trying your best to fly over the Terrors as well. So, yeah, it really depends, man. Uh, if that last opponent didn't have too much removal. They knew we were getting the Phoenix Chick 
Yeah, Blood Feather Phoenix. Oh my goodness. They knew we were getting the Blood Feather Phoenix back, so maybe they didn't have too much to deal with the flyer, but even then, man. Orizov colors? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Ral's reinforcement didn't do as much as I would have liked to see today, and if the meta ends up being just more mechanized warfare red, then we know they run, you know, uh, two to four and the festivities. W w where do they usually land? Like three? Three and the festivities, right? In the mechanized warfare build. So that's just going to clean up the reinforcements every single time. I would have loved to see this do just a little bit more today, and I think overall it's going to be fine, but you could drop these and opt in for something else that removes, I guess. It really depends what you're going to end up seeing, and we never really know where the meta is going to land for the first couple weeks of a new set either, so it really, really depends, huh? Yeah, I could see dropping down a couple rounds reinforcements, and it could be as simple as going up a Ren's Resolve, just for the sake of seeing more off the top, and a second in the festivities. Mainly because, you know, it does do that one damage to the opponent's face too, which works with the Phoenix, and the Phoenix was kind of an MVP today overall, wasn't it? Um... Yeah, I wouldn't drop any Phoenix. I wouldn't drop any Urabrask either. When we did get it onto the board, it's kind of just disgusting overall. When it flips into the great work, it's kind of like I said, you pretty much just win. Uh, unless the opponent is has equal value of aggro, then that chapter two is a little slow. You're just getting treasures, and so the opponent has their chance. They have their turn to try to uh, actually get your life total down to zero before chapter three. And at that point, you just pretty much win the game once chapter three happens, so... I liked this one, man. I mean, of course I did, right? Right up my alley. This was beautiful. Urabrask is such a cool card. We got to try some mid-range bru uh, brews with Urabrask as well, right? Guys, if you made it this far into the video, then of course, y'all are champions for real. I super duper appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video.